Why I don't like getting things done part two. So I made a previous video talking about getting things done versus the one thing in the books. And now this video is going to be going directly into the getting things done system and explaining what exactly I don't like about it and how I do stuff a little differently. And then I'm going to make a third part showing my exact system and how I kind of based it off of. So for this, we're going to start off with, we have our random inputs. So this is everything that's going to pop up during your day and all the little ideas that you can spark off. And then they have this random thing, is it actionable? Yes or no? First off, I think this whole, I mean, if you get an input and it's not actionable, I, mean, I get that you might need to store it, but for the most part, I mean, I feel like this system is a little backwards. You should, when you get the input, whatever it is that you want, that you think you have to do, instead of sorting it or doing all this ahead of time, the first step should be write it down. And for that, what I personally use is I go, hey Siri, add a reminder to make dinner tonight. Boom. Just I have a list on my phone. I write all this, anything that pops in my head that I think I might want to do. I'm going to put a reminder in there. And then I can check the reminders on my phone. And once a week, I transfer them to a master list I have on Google Doc sorted into categories and from there what I'm able to do is look at them and then use the 80-20 rule over and over again like it's talked about in the one thing and just focus on what I should actually be doing for each of my time blocks for like work, family, exercising, like mindfulness um, and all that stuff. I don't actually sort it when I first get it because it can be a lot and it can take you it can break your focus so if you just randomly have an idea and you're like oh this email just came in while i'm working let's put it in a reference somewhere that's going to break your chain of thought that's going to break your focus and you're going to completely lose what you're doing and you're going to start shooting off on 15 different things that now going into email triggers off because of adhd so instead of we're going to cross this whole section out and we're gonna come back to it later. And this two minute thing, we're, that is a huge no. If it takes more less than two minutes, do not do it right away. Then put it on the list and then maybe set an hour once a week to do all your two minute tasks. But if you do this, like, I don't know, cleaning my car window is going to take me two minutes. Emptying the trash out is going to, from my car is going to take me two minutes. Refilling my windshield wiper is going to take me, the fluid is going to take me about two minutes. Now I'm outside. Well, maybe I can, uh, the wheelbarrow fell down because we had a storm. So let me put that back up. And, oh, let me go throw some sticks in the fire because it's going to take about two minutes. Now I have pine sap on my hands, so I have to go clean them. I go into the basement to get the cleaner for the pine sap. Basement's a little unorganized. Let me put away this tool. Like you'll never get anything done. And that's also one of the biggest things that I have issue with is getting things done. You don't want to get things done. You want to get their important. You want to like focus on the one thing and get that done. Just getting things done. I have an infinite amount of things and things don't really do much for me. If I get the most important thing in my day done, then that's like, Wow, I did it. And that's my biggest issue with the book itself. And just, I feel like the system with all its energy level, like if you're tired, you want to sort your tasks on which ones you can do when you're tired. I say if you're tired, lie down for 10 minutes and you won't be tired anymore. And then go back to doing the one thing that you need to be doing focusing on the most important part of the task that's going to help you be successful. Anyways, delegate. Yes, delegating is important, but you want to write stuff down. And then once you write it down, so I'm just going to go here, 
So it read it down. Ooh, we're going to switch back from that one. In phone. I prefer the phone because I have it on me almost always, and I can give uh, voice to text transcriptions on it. And then once a week, phone to computer. And that's a little difficult to see. So let me see if that works better in black. There we go. So once a week, phone to computer. And I'm not saying you can't get stuff done on your phone in that time. I'm just saying you can look at your phone quickly and glance through it and see what you need to do. But at the end of the week, any tasks left undone on your phone then need to get put up on the computer so you can have a giant reference showing you everything that you think you might need to get done. And the truth is you're never going to finish your to-do list. I've had one ever since sixth grade and it's only getting longer. And yeah, things just fall off because I look at it and I'm like, well, I never got the time to do this and I don't think it's important anymore. But at the time when I wrote it down, I thought this was going to be like something really important I had to do. I'm like, no. Anyways, from your weekly, from your computer to-do list, you can sort this into delegation. Uh, let's see, defer it. For me to do a specific time date, for me to do, uh, for me to do as soon as I can. Okay, so for, in the list on the computer, you can have a subcategory called delegate. Um, defer, I don't really have one. I just have a section that says calendar and that has anything that has specifically to do with due dates. So I can check that. So I'm just gonna write calendar. And I most likely misspelled that, but my handwriting is messy, so who knows. And then project support materials for actions. Um, I don't necessarily know about that, but. And from the computer, this is also where you can reference stuff. So if you just wanna have a section called references, like a quote that you read or something that you want to look into. I do have a section on my computer just called look into. That's there for if I have free time and I catch myself maybe looking at social media, I'm like, oh, why am I doing this? I literally could be getting some stuff done. And I have a list of YouTube videos I want to watch because they're on topics that I think could be beneficial to my life. But the moment I come across them, I'm actually getting other work done. So I don't want to be distracting myself. And for the most part, references, this whole thing right here, I do using Chrome folders. So I'll have my Chrome folders. I use, I love Chrome. I use it as my default web, web browser for everything. And I run DuckDuckGo as my search engine, but with Chrome, I can do Unhooked, which is an amazing Google add-on for YouTube. And it basically blocks out the whole first page so you can't see any of the distracting videos. And literally, all you see is a search bar. Because YouTube is an amazing tool, but one of the issues is it has too many distractions and they're trying to get you to stay on the platform by watching other stuff. So I'm gonna do a whole other video about this, but I like Chrome, I like the dark mode on it. Um, and in Chrome, I just have one folder called other, and this is why I reference all my things under. So if I want to learn how to make kombucha, which I'm not even going to try to spell, I'll put all the tabs relating to kombucha in a folder, just do like K for kombucha and all the tabs are right here. And if I want to do working out, I'll do all my references right there. But one of the things you have to realize is Digital sorting is almost never something you should be doing because it's much faster just to sort it. No, just, sorry, just to search through it because you can hit Control Shift O 
on your Windows computer, Command Shift O if you have a Mac, and you can just type in like kombucha and all your tabs relating to kombucha will just pop up on the computer. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna wipe this right here so I can do some other writing, but then predefine your work. What can I do? What can I do in the time I have? <clears throat> and what do I have the energy to do? This whole section, I have tried it. It is bad, it is a mess. You're gonna wind up spending half your time going through your to-do list and putting like, this requires an energy level of five, or this requires an energy level of two. But what I do is I just had like different things. So I wrote one for like, one was cracked out me. That was like, I've had a lot of caffeine which I did quit and I recommend people who have a caffeine issue do. One was just regular me and one was an emoji for just dead tired. I should put her frowny face on this. And I would put one of those icons next to all the tasks. And then what I would also do is I would put like 15 minutes next to one task or 30 minutes. But the thing is, those time estimations are horrible because I have ADHD and it's almost impossible for me to actually get the time correct when I'm estimating. So for this whole context, what can I do? I'm just gonna replace it with, let's go here, here, most important. If you have low energy, take a nap. Like literally, I'm gonna do a whole other video on this, but every 30, every three hours, I will sit down and I'll rest for 10 minutes. And what this does is it allows the brain to send nutrients around and circulate it. Cause you get into a single mode of thinking and you'll burn through certain nutrition in certain parts of the brain. And you have a buildup of excess chemicals from that single mode of thinking and just relaxing allows you can actually feel like the stress moving out of certain areas of the brain and it's amazing like if you're really frustrated and you're getting annoyed at your computer just try sitting down and being mindful and just resting for like 10 minutes closing your eyes allowing your mind to drift to whatever it needs to do but Huberman talks about this you know I just did start doing it before we talked about it but it is an amazing thing I recommend. It allows you to cut way back on caffeine. And then, okay, next thing, unplanned work, predefined work, and defined work. Um, again, I'm just gonna go most important. You see how easy that is? You can cut out that whole section. Goals, vision, purpose. So. The one thing you need to know about the one thing is all this stuff right here, the purpose, the vision, the goals, the responsibilities and the projects, you're gonna be using when you define what is the most important thing that you could be doing. So you're gonna look at it, you're gonna be like, okay, what is my purpose? That's gonna be one thing for thinking of what's the most important. And yeah, vision is basically the same as purpose. Um, Goals is seen as purpose, basically. Uh, I mean, yes, your purpose can be like be the best version of yourself, and the goal is to work out more, but it's kind of the same. Responsibilities. Well, if you work on your purpose for like four hours a day, then you can work on your responsibilities for like three hours or something. And this could be taking care of your parents, um, feeding your kids, going to classes, going to the grocery store, taking care of your pets. Um, projects, uh, I mean, you really should align your projects with your purpose. If that's possible, I guess you might have to take a job in the meantime that doesn't align with your purpose or your responsibilities. I mean, if in that case, I guess that would still fall under responsibilities. So projects and calendar of actions. I'm saying there's two things for this. It's gonna be your 
purpose and your responsibility, blah, 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 whatever. And under your purpose, you're going to have things like visions, goals, and projects. And under your responsibilities, you can still have projects, but you'll have calendars. And you can kind of put both, of, you have visions, goals, projects, and calendars under both, but for the purpose of this video, uh, that's how I'm defining it. And last thing is, I'm gonna delete that quickly. I'm driven, okay, trust. Yes, trust in this process. Do not think about whether or not it's actually working for you, or if you're drowning and getting your to-do list done. Trust the process. Um, that's retarded. Um, I trust my judgment because my inventory of actions is complete and current. My, my focus and my mutual play, sharp vision, clear. It's like, I mean, sure. If you have a uh, no ADHD, a sharp vision, and a decisive, clear a decision. What's that? Decision is clear and psyche relaxed um yeah try getting things done but if you have adhd your brain is constantly trying to distract you and you still want to be productive and get something done and accomplish the goals you have set out in your life try working on the one thing i can't recommend the book more 